There were special days that came very rarely, days when the food was piled high on Ned's tray, and flower vases and bowls filled with fresh fruit were placed on his table. In the mornings, Martin and Rolf would lead him out of the room and stand him under a shower at the end of the corridor. They would hold him there and sponge him clean. Then, still under the shower head, but with the flow of water turned off, they would cut his hair and shave his beard. His room, too, when he returned to it, would have been scrubbed clean and washed. The chamber pot would have gone, and the sweet scent of pine room freshener would hang in the air. In the afternoons of these extraordinary days, Dr. Mallow would visit him, together with two others, a man and a woman who did not wear white coats, and who brought the atmosphere of the outside world into the room with them. The woman's handbag and the man's briefcase fascinated Ned. They bore flavours and smells that were intriguing, enchanting, and frightening, too. They all spoke to each other in a language that Ned could not understand, the same language that Rolf and Martin spoke, and that he had decided long ago was Scandinavian. He heard his name mentioned in those conversations, always as Thomas now. They never used the name Ned any more. The woman liked to talk to him sometimes. "'Do you remember me?' she would ask in thickly accented English. "'Yes, how are you?' Ned would reply. "'But how are you?' "'Oh, I'm much better, thank you, much better. "'Are you happy here?' Uh, "'Very happy, thank you, yes, very happy indeed.' One day in summer they came again, but this time there were three of them, the same couple as before, but with another woman, younger than the other, and a great deal more inquisitive.' Ned picked up Dr. Mallow's tension at her questions, and did his best to say what he thought the doctor expected and wanted of him. "'How long have you been here, Thomas?' This new woman's English was better even than Dr. Mallow's, and she spoke to Ned very directly. The others used to ask him questions politely, but never with the impression that they were especially interested in his answers. This woman seemed very curious about Ned, and paid great attention to the way he replied. "'How long?' Ned looked towards Dr. Mallow. "'I'm not sure how long.' "'Don't look at the doctor,' said the woman. "'I want to know how long you think you've been here.' "'It's a little hard to tell. "'Perhaps three or four years? "'Maybe a bit longer?' "'The woman nodded. "'I see. "'And your name is Thomas, I believe?' "'Ned nodded enthusiastically. "'Absolutely. "'But when you first came here, your name was Ned.' "'Ned found that he did not like to hear that name.' "'I was in a bit of a state then,' he said. "'I needed to clear up a lot of the ideas in my head. "'I'd been imagining all kinds of things. "'Have you made friends with the other patients?' "'Dr. Mallow started to speak to the young woman. "'She listened for a while and spoke back at him rapidly. "'Ned imagined that he heard some words "'that were a little like the English words "'better and hysteria. "'It was strange to see how small Dr. Mallow looked "'and how afraid he was of this young woman.' His head was on one side as he listened to her, and he nodded and smiled, passing his tongue quickly over his lips and making notes on the clipboard he carried with him. It was something more than the woman's height that made him look so small beside her, Ned thought, even though she was nearly a foot taller than him. His whole demeanour reminded Ned of how he tried to look when he was doing his best to please Rolf or even Dr. Mallow himself. The woman turned to Ned. "'The doctor tells me that you have chosen not to associate with any other patients since you have been here.' "'I... I don't think I've been ready.' The woman raised her eyebrows. "'Why not?' Ned knew that he must not look to Dr. Mallow for prompting or encouragement. It would please him more if he showed that he could think for himself. "'I wanted to be more confident in myself, if you see what I mean. I didn't want to lie to anyone about who I was. Also,' he added, "'I only speak English, and I've not wanted to have the problem of being misunderstood.' That last idea came to him from nowhere, and he hoped that Dr. Mallow would be pleased at his inventiveness. There followed another flurry of conversation, in which the other woman and her companion joined. Dr. Mallow nodded his head decisively and made some more notes. Ned could see that he was trying hard to appear pleased. "'I will see you again soon, Thomas,' said the young woman. "'I hope that the company of some English-speaking people will be helpful for you. Will you promise me to try and talk to other patients? Just one or two to start with.' "'Under supervision, in case you become nervous. "'I think you will enjoy it.' "'Ned nodded, and did his best to look brave and resolute. "'Good.' "'She looked around the room. "'You do not have any books here, I see.' "'I have been writing again,' said Ned, almost defensively. "'I've written some poems, actually. "'No doubt you will write better poems if you have the chance to read. 
Books are always healthy. Goodbye, Thomas. I will see you on my next visit, and I expect to see you with books in here. We will talk about what you have read and what friends you have made. That evening, when Martin came with his supper and to take away the fruit bowl and the vase of flowers, Ned almost winded him. That woman said I had to talk to other people. Is it true? I don't want to. I want to be left on my own. Tell Dr. Mallow that I don't want to meet anyone, especially not English people. You do as doctor tells. If doctor wants you meet other people, you are meeting other people, Martin replied. Not matter if English or not English. Not your choosing. For doctor to choosing. And here, look. Martin dropped an enormous English encyclopedia onto the floor beside the bed. You will read. Ned smiled himself to sleep that night. The lost memory came to him of a kind old man reading the tales of Uncle Remus, something about Br'er Rabbit, the Tar Baby, and the Briar Patch. He did not quite know why the story was relevant, but he knew that it was.